Live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE. Covering OpenStack Summit 2017. Brought to you by the OpenStack Foundation, Red Hat, and additional ecosystem support. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman, joined by my co-host John Troyer. You're watching theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. Happy to welcome to the program, Daryl Jordan-Smith, who's the Vice President of Telecommunications at Red Hat. Thanks so much for joining us. It's great to be here, thank you. All right, so Daryl, last year at this show, you know, the telcos were like all in force. Uh, I got to interview Verizon. Uh, we're going to have uh, Beth, who was on the keynote stage on Monday, yep. uh, on our coverage tomorrow. I, I know they're a Red Hat customer. Yes. Um, when I hear uh, at Red Hat Summit, there were some really big telcos uh, that, that are Red Hat customers. Uh, so to tell us why telco and OpenStack you know, go so well together these days. Well, telcos are looking for open source, um, for uh, innovation. Um, they, they need to change the way that they deliver services today and modernize their network infrastructure to become more agile. And a lot of them are doing that because of 5G, you know, the next generation of services that they will be deploying over their network infrastructure. They can't do that unless they have an agile infrastructure fabric and an agile software um, capability to deliver those applications over those networks. All right, well, there, there's a lot to dig into yet. Let, let, let's start with, you know, NFV was the use case last yes. year. Well, 5G, IoT, definitely want to mm -hmm. get, get into though, but uh, my understanding, you know, I simplified it. NFV is just how the telcos can help deliver via software uh, services that they have. I mean, think about how you know your set-top box. You know, I can get channels and I can get certain programming. Um, is, is that kind of what you see? And how, how how do they do their business models? Yeah, the, the, yeah. traditionally they bought appliances, hardware-specific appliances. They put them in network operation centers, and many thousands of those around the world. You know, in the U.S., there's tens of thousands of them. They're really moving more to a software-based model where they don't necessarily need to buy a fixed appliance with its own silicon. They're going with commercial off-the-shelf x86-based technology, and they're actually deploying that in what I call next generation data centers uh, around open compute platform being an architecture where you're looking at storage, compute, um, networking in a scalable uh, fashion using open source technologies to deploy that in, in, at massive scale. Yeah, very, very different from, you think about like a cloud might be a place where you, you know, have services run, but the, the, the telcos are, are pushing services uh, with their software out to their uh, consumers. Yeah, they're, they're changing the core network infrastructure to support that, and at the mobile edge, in these network operation centers at the edge, they're making those more agile as well in order to push as many services out closely to the customer, but also to aggregate content and data that their customers would, would, would acquire. So for example, example, you take a video clip on your phone, you know, there's no point in storing that in the core of the network, you want to maybe store that at the edge where maybe some of your friends would share it at that point in time, more efficient ways of driving yeah. that. It, it, I wonder if you can expand a little bit that, that term edge, because mm. we hear, is that the edge of the network, is that a mobile device, is that a sensor for IoT uh, in the telecom world, is it all of the above? Well, a lot of people use it as all of the above, but in the context that I'm using it, it's it's at the edge of the network. Yeah. It's not the device. Um, that That is a whole separate uh, set of conversations and things which are very IoT-centric. At the moment, the telecommunications companies want to make the edge more efficient. They want to build clouds around the edge. They want to aggregate all those different clouds, and they want to um, build agile-based infrastructure. So. Similarly to the way that Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google deliver their services today, they need to get into that space in order to be agile enough to develop and deploy their next generation of applications and services. So at this point, OpenStack in its evolution uh, with this customer vertical, it seems like uh, we're not only talking about a cloud, but maybe a cloud of clouds. Yes, absolutely. I mean, telcos, again, um, they typically have one of everything. Um, they are looking at decoupled solutions in terms of the network-based infrastructure. Uh, they want to be able to, to manage every layer of that infrastructure independently of the other layers in order to drive uh, maximum flexibility and agility into their infrastructure, but also so they don't let locked in to any one particular vendor. That's a big, big theme in the telco space. So you use the words uh, agility and flexibility. Mm. So I, in a previous lifetime, I did work with some telecom mm. 
mm. uh, providers, and they were not known for those words of, of, of no. agility <laughs> and flexibility. Uh, we're in a world now with open source, mm. uh, uh, with you know, with CI/CD. We talk about upgradability. With, you know, a lot of uh, the talk here uh, at OpenStack is about manageability and flexibility, and you know, building, putting containers on top. Maybe we can go there next. Mm. But do you, as you work with your your customers and partners in the telecom space, it seems like they've had to have a cultural shift. I see mm. a lot of people from the carriers here, right? Uh, you know, the, and they're as long-haired and shaggy and barefoot mm. as any as any other engineer here at yep. that OpenStack Summit. Is, has there been a real cultural shift inside telecom to, to accomplish this? Yeah, there's a real cultural shift that's ongoing. It's got a ways to go. Um, so you know, the, the telcos themselves are engineeringly orientated, so they traditionally have come from an environment where we'll build it and customers will come, where now they're, they're looking at we need to build it quicker and faster in order to attract customers, you know, get them to come and view our services, get them addicted to a certain degree, maybe the wrong word, but to our content. Um, so building sticky services, you know, trying to reduce the churn they have in their business, um, you know, driving innovation through open source because I think they've realized uh, that innovation isn't necessarily within their own company, it sits elsewhere. So, you know, which is the new Uber, as you, as it were? Which is the new Airbnb? What is the new WhatsApp-based application? They want to create a network infrastructure that's flexible enough with all of those attributes through APIs so those companies can develop innovative next-generation content and services over their network infrastructure in order to attract and make you know, services sticky for their customers. Darrell, I wonder if you can speak to the, the complexity of the solutions in the telco space. Uh, last year, you know, I said we, we spoke to Verizon, and they love what they have, but mm. they had to uh, chew some glass, mm. you know, uh, you know, walk over some hot coals uh, to be able to get the solution together. These are big, complicated solutions. Uh, you know, we've talked in general about OpenStack and some, you know, trying to simplify some of the complexity. But can, can you speak to kind of some of the? The, the, how long it takes to roll these out and some of the effort involved for the telcos. Well, it's it's sort of a walk, you know, a crawl, walk, run process to, to a lot of them because, A, working with open source is very different than what they traditionally have done. Uh, and as you mentioned earlier, traditionally they, they'll buy an, a, an application through an appliance, they'll take nine months to deploy it in all their centers, and then another three to six months later they might, you know, switch it on. Um, in the software agile world, they've got to condense that sort of 12 to 18 month period down to maybe three or four weeks. They may stand up a service you know, for an event like the Olympics and then take it down after the Olympics. So there's a lot of complexity and change in the way that they need to deliver those services. And that complexity isn't trivial. So it involves delivering quality of service through the deployment of next generation network infrastructure because they are regulated companies. So you know, they've got to maintain that quality of service in order to be able to bill and meet the regulations that they, they, they have to adhere to in the markets that they operate their network infrastructure. Very different from the, 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 the Googles, the Facebooks of the world. They don't have that, that sort of uh, uh, regulation over their head. The telcos do. So they have a level of discipline that they need to achieve in terms of availability of their network infrastructure, the availability of their services, the availability of their applications, and that links into a whole quality of uh, service experience for their customers, and it linked into their operation system support, into their billing system, and the list goes on and on and on. So what we found at Red Hat is that that is not trivial, that is hard. And a lot of the telcos are very engineeringly orientated. It's great working with them because they, they really understand the difficulties and the fact that this is particularly hard. Um, they also know that they want to build it and own it and understand it themselves because of their business model. To them, the network is an asset. It's not something that they, they, can, they can just uh, outsource to someone else uh, that doesn't necessarily understand that same uh, degree of that asset. So they want to get their heads around that. So they need that reliability. If from the eyes of a service provider, how mature is op OpenStack right now? Uh, is it in production? Can they trust it? Uh, you know, we're, we're a few, more than a few years into the OpenStack yeah. evolution. So where are we in deployment? They, you know, a number of operators are in deployment. You mentioned um, one on, uh, a few moments ago, like Verizon. Yeah, AT&T uh, yeah, was on stage. Absolutely, AT&T in Telecom's production. a headline sponsor of absolutely. the event. Uh, exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and, and what they're doing is they're starting very pragmatically. They're looking at specific services, and they're building slowly a service upon service upon service, so they go from 
from a crawl to a walk and then to a run. I think it's, you know, what we're seeing in OpenStack is not if, but when these, these guys will deploy in mass scale. And we're beginning now to see uh, a general acceptance that this is a methodology and or a technology that they can deploy and will deploy in the NFVI con context. The other thing that's occurring in this space is they're looking at traditional IT workloads. So a telco-based cloud, if you want to use that terminology, is just as capable of running you know, uh, IT-based workloads and services as well. So a, lot, a number of them are looking at their own enterprise and running those environments, and some of them are partnering with some of our partners to build OpenStack public cloud instances. So they want to try and attract services to that, that environment as well. Yeah, it's interesting you point that out. There's, there's been that ebb and flow of can the telco players be cloud, as, as John pointed out, you know, I, I worked in telecommunications back in the 90s. Mm. You know, agile and fast was not, uh, no. you know, <laughs> the thing of the day. Uh, one of the big uh, companies who had bought a cloud company just sold off, yeah. you know, lots of their data centers. Um, do they feel that they're going to compete against, you know, the Amazon, Microsoft, Google's of the world? Do they think they'll be service providers? Where where do they see as the, their natural fit in the cloud ecosystem? So, so, you know, my role is on a global basis. In yeah. North America, they don't want to. I don't think they feel they can compete yeah. in, the, in the way that you were intimating in that in that regard. However, where they do think they can compete, and since we're going to probably talk about 5G and IoT, that is the area where they see public cloud applications and services being developed. So they're looking at you know the insurance industry, the automotive industry, the manufacturing industry, and creating an environment where those applications can be built to many, many thousands of millions of devices connected to them. So I think the definition of in North America of, of public cloud infrastructure is going to evolve in that direction. In other markets, such as Latin America and in Europe, some of the, the telecommunications companies believe that they can be competitive in that space. So more recently, you know, Orange announced that they're working with OpenStack to deploy public cloud, Telefonica, Deutsche Telekom, China Mobile, America Mobile, they're all using OpenStack to try and enter that, that, that specific market space. Okay, now, please, please talk to us about the, the, the 5G angles here. You know, obviously at like Mobile World Congress, it was like the number one conversation. When we went to the Open Networking Summit, it was there. You're the first person to talk about it that I heard, I didn't, maybe I missed it in one of the keynotes, but you know, none of our interviews has it come out yet, so how does that fit into the OpenStack well, picture? So, so 5G is the reason why telcos are building NFEI, yeah. that, or NFE, yeah, because they realize that to connect all of those devices to their network-based infrastructure, they need to do it intelligently, they need to do it at the edge, and they need to have a high degree of flexibility and agility to their network-based infrastructure to create an innovation uh, environment for application developers to connect all those devices. So, you know, we, we, we talk about smart cars. There's a good example around 5G. You need low latency, you need the high, high availability, you need to be reliable, you need to provide, provide all of that network infrastructure as an example, plus you need a, a, a portfolio of developers that are going to create all sorts of different applications for those, 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 those vehicles that will be driving around on the street. So that, without 5G, that does not happen. Um, you're not, you know, some, some metropolitan areas, you know, the, the, the amount of connectivity that you have access to in terms of the traditional uh, cloud-based access networking infrastructure doesn't facilitate the amount of density that 5G will actually facilitate. So you need to be able to change the, the basis in which you're building that infrastructure to lower the cost of the network in terms of being able to drive that. All right, uh, and I'm curious, I, I think about the global reach we were just talking about. Uh, usually the global reach of a new technology like 5G lags a little bit in the rest of the world compared to mm. uh, you know, Western Europe and North America. Mm -hmm. Well, I think um, in Asia, 5G is, is you know, uh, if I look at what they're trying to do, the leading vendors, you know, ZTE, um, Samsung, um, Huawei, they're heavily invested in 5G-based infrastructure, and they don't have, their operators in those part of the world don't have an awful lot of legacy-based infrastructure to be able to have to replace. They, they, they can get there a lot faster. The other thing is with 5G for them, the applications and services and the way that people experience uh, network-based uh, uh, access or the internet, if for another, want of another word, is very different than the way that maybe we experience it here in the US or in Europe. So I think you're going to see different applications and different business models evolve in different markets in Asia than you would say here in North America. 
in North America, I think that uh, it's going to take a lot of the operators, different business models to look at maybe some of the higher uh, order of applications and services that you know drive stickiness for their own infra infrastructure and network services, but also you know some of the more advanced applications like I mentioned smart cars or you know smart homes or smart cities or energy or you know better ways of delivering products in terms of distribution to your home those those types of applications and services which won't necessarily you know in some of those other markets be there and similarly for Europe. All right. Dal Jordan Smith, really appreciate you joining us, giving us all the updates on Telco, how it fits with OpenStack. John Troyer and I will be back with lots more coverage here from the OpenStack Summit 2017 in Boston. You're watching theCUBE.